Hey, how will health care reform be paid for? Democrats insist the bulk of the money is going to come from savings, but my next guest warns the bottom line, expect higher taxes and fees. America's Americans for Tax Reform Tax Policy Director Ryan Ellis is here to help us follow the money. Uh, Ryan, I, I'm sure you heard that interview. And I mean, just the common sense aspect of this says that some of the things that they're saying that's going to pay for it, just common sense, not people being accountants or having college degrees, they just don't add up. Well, it's important to keep in mind that there is a way they're going to pay for this, at least they're going to try. The way they're going to pay for this is with 18 separate new tax increases, which is what's in the Senate health care bill. You can find a list of all 18 of these tax increases on ATR's website, www.atr.org. Uh, a lot of them you've been talking about on the show today. Others have been talking about on TV all day. If you're uninsured, you're going to pay a higher tax. If you're a small employer who can't afford health insurance, you're going to pay a higher tax. If you have a comprehensive, more generous health insurance package, you're going to pay a higher tax. If you are a wage earner or somebody who's self-employed, you're going to pay a higher Medicare tax. If you go to get a tan for crying out loud, you're going to pay a higher tax. The list goes on and on. So from your estimation, then, of all of these taxes, which percentage of this bill will be paid for through higher taxes and new fees? Well, there's really two major groups of categories that this is paid for under this bill. Uh, the first is about $500 billion in new net tax increases over the next decade, and there's about $500 billion in Medicare cuts over the next decade. So those are really the two mechanisms that this bill is paid for with. The Medicare K cuts that you're talking about, uh, when we start saying that states are going to have to pay a larger bulk of Medi Medicaid, doesn't that really also mean a tax on the people who live in those states, outside of Nebraska, that's, of course? Yes, outside of Nebraska. Uh, th that's right. This bill does expand the Medicaid program. Uh, people need to keep the terminology in mind here. Medicare is uh, government-run health care for old people. Medicaid is government-run health care for poor people. Um, this bill expands Medicaid, which is the poor people program, uh, and Medicaid is a shared program that the federal government runs all of the state governments. And uh, so the federal government's very generous in saying that they're going to expand this Medicaid program, but with the exception of the state of Nebraska, they're not being very generous in helping the states pay for this expansion on their end. Give me a round number. Uh, give us a number of how much more in taxes this is going to cost the American public to pay for this bill, even if we take at face value the, n the numbers that they've given us in terms of the actual cost. Well, you can take a look at the actual CBO score. The Congressional Budget Office has it down to the uh, final jot and tittle. They say it's $498 billion over the first 10 years that this bill is in place. So you figure that's about $50 billion a year. The other way to look at it is, uh, it adds about one half of one percentage point of GDP to federal tax, the federal tax burden. So, Ryan, in effect, is the president keeping his promise, or will he be able to keep his promise not to tax people or uh, making um, less than 250,000 households, 250,000 a year? N not even close. We actually have that broken out on our website as well. Out of those 18 tax increases that we we mentioned, seven of them, at least seven of them, conservatively speaking. Uh, violate President Obama's promise not to raise any form of taxes on families making less than $250,000 right. per year. That's violated again and again in this bill. Ryan, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.